In this video, we'll talk about variance, but first we'll talk about linearity of expectation with indicator random variables. So let's say there are seven mermaids in the sea. Below is a table of each mermaid with their hair color. How many mermaids have red hair? Well, it's not a trick question, the answer is three. Um, but let's create this extra row, which is one if the hair color was red, and zero otherwise. So here we have three ones. And so actually it turns out we can sum the bottom row of indicator variables to get three. So indicator meaning one if it's red and zero if not. And if we sum this row, we'll get our answer. So now let's apply this idea. So suppose n people go to a party and leave their hat with a hat check person. At the end of the party, she returns hats randomly, so she doesn't care about her job. Let x be the number of people who get their original hat back. Then what's the expected value of x? So we can try doing brute force. So the range of x will be somewhere between zero and n. It's missing n minus one, but uh, think about why. Um, if we want the probability that n all n people get their hat back, it turns out that answer is 1 over n factorial. Then if we try to find the probability that 0 people get their hat back, this is already really hard. And so we're going to try using linearity of expectation. So quick question, does it matter where you are in line? So if you're first in line, the probability you get your hat back is 1 over n because there's n hats in total. If you're last in line, the probability you get your hat back is also 1 over n because there's one left and the chance is zeros is 1 over n, so it actually doesn't matter. So now for i equals 1 to n, let xi be 1 if the ith person got their hat back and 0 otherwise. Then x, the number of people who get their hat back, is the sum of these indicator 1 and 0 variables, just like the mermaid problem. We'll use linearity of expectation. The expected value of xi is 1 times the probability it's 1 plus 0 times the probability it's 0, because those are the only two values it can take on. And this is just the probability of xi is 1. And that's the probability that the ith person got their hat back, which is 1 over n. As we said, it didn't matter where you are in line. So the expected value of x is the sum of uh, this expected value of the sum of these xi's. And by linearity of expectation, we can break into the sum of the expected values. And since each is the same, we get a uh, sum of n copies of 1 over n, which just turns out to be n times 1 over n, or 1. So that's really cool. And notice that these xi's are not independent random variables, because me getting my hat back and influences someone else getting their hat back. So linearity of expectation with indicators, if you're only expect, asked about the expected value of a random variable and not its PMF, you may be able to write x as a sum of possibly dependent indicator, like one zero random variables, and apply linearity of expectation. And the expected value of your indicator variable is just the probability it's equal to 1. So now let's talk about variance. So which game would you rather play? We flip a fair coin. If it's heads, you pay me a dollar. If it's tails, I pay you a dollar. Uh, the second game is if it's heads, you pay me a thousand dollars. And if it's tails, I pay you a thousand dollars. Both games are fair because their expected value is zero. Um, you're expected to win as much as you lose. And, but, but the second one is different, right? So let's see how the uh, variance is defined to be like how far a random variable is from its mean on average. So here's the random variable minus its mean. And we can either take the uh, expected value for the distance, or we can square it for the distance. And it turns out we're going to use the second one. And then we want the average deviation from its mean. So we'll take the expected value of the x minus its average squared. And this is what the definition of variance is. The variance is always non-negative, since we're taking an expectation of something that's always non-negative. And we can also show for any scalars, a and b, the variance of ax plus b turns out to be just a squared times the variance of x. And actually, you can do some algebra to show this formula is equal to this formula. And this one is actually more useful um, when we do computations. The standard deviation of a random variable is uh, the square root of the variance. And we want this because the units of variance are squared in terms of the original, because we're squaring the deviations. And so to get it back into the original units, we want to take the square root. So now we're going to prove this fact, kind of. So here's two distributions. One is just shifted over, which has higher variance. Well, they actually have the same variance. The variance of x plus b is the same as variance of x because it doesn't, like, this one isn't more random or less random than this one. And now, to find the variance of ax, you can actually just do the algebra, which I'm going to skip here, and you get a squared variance of x. So let x be the outcome of a fair six sided die. What is the variance of x? So, what we're going to use is this formula. Um, the expected value of x is just 1 times 1 6 plus 2 times the 6 plus all the way to 6 times 1 6. And the expected value of x squared. Remember by lotus, it's you just square each value before multiplying by the probability. And remember, note that you don't square the probabilities as well. Otherwise, they wouldn't add up to 1. And you get this. And so the variance is just expected value of x squared minus expected value of x quantity squared. And so you get your answer of 35 over 12. 